Hi guys, it's me, me Gavili Ayala, and here's my review on the first Monster Blood book. Yeah, by R.L. Stein, third one. Yeah, this is from the Retro Gen, that's why there's no number up here, here, and that's why it's so thin. Yeah, it's from a Retro Gen I got, which has these from these, uh, Legend of the Lost Legend, Why I'm Free to Be, is Nine Terror Tower, and this, Monster Blood. Yeah, this book is about this kid named Evan, who is staying with his weird great aunt Catherine, who is deaf. In the TV episode, she's not deaf. She's she can hear stuff. Uh, that's actually a change I kind of like in the episode. I'll tell you more of my thoughts in the episode when I do my presents book review. Like this one presents Monster Blood book review. So yeah, uh, he meets this friend named Andy. His friend. She's a, it's a girl, and her real name is Andrea, which um, she really hates the name, so she demands Evan to not call her by her real name. And uh, the two become friends, they go to a toy store, and they buy this can of monster blood. And next they pay, those, they pay the store owner, and next uh, they decide Andy and wants to share the monster blood with Evan. So they keep it uh, in, in a tin in uh, Aunt Catherine's house. But yes, things start to go wrong. Trigger, the dog of Evan, eats monster blood, and you basically know what happens if you've seen the episode or read the book. Yeah. And uh, there's a big old, there's a big giant twist at the end uh, that involves Aunt Catherine, the monster blood, and the cat she is uh, bickering with uh, Sarah Beth. Yeah. Yeah, this twist happens in the episode too. Yeah, there's one giant difference in the episode. Evan doesn't find the monster blood in storage. He by he finds it there in a in a room upstairs. That Aunt Catherine tells him not to go in, but of course uh, um, kids don't listen. Evan decides to go inside anyways. Yeah, that's the main difference between the book and the episode. How Evan finds monster blood. Yeah, the way how they change it reminds me of stay at the basement or how to kill a monster or attack of the jack from the slapping world, yeah. Or the parents tell the kids, or the aunt or the parent tells the kids to not go where they should, um, to that room, but the kids don't pay attention, they decide to go there anyways, because, you know, kids. So yeah, what do I think of Monster Blood? So this book is pretty good. I know Michael Guzman's fan really doesn't like this book, but to me, I kind of like it. Uh, it's kind of cheesy at some points, it's um, not that scary for me. But um, it's kind of slow at times, but I kind of I really enjoy this one. It's an 8.5 out of 10, definitely a B plus, definitely the one of the best Monster Blood books. To be honest, I think it's better than three, but it's worse than two. Yeah, I haven't read Monster Blood four yet. That book is so hard to find, dude. I, it's like so expensive there in Amazon. Yeah, I don't buy books on eBay because I'm from the Philippines, and if I do buy on eBay, then They'll just ship to the U.S. or Australia or something, or Canada. Yeah, I ain't buying eBay. I'm buying an Amazon. So yeah, what do you think of this book? Do you think it's the best Monster Blood book, or do you think it's the worst? I think it's one of the best. Yeah, there are three, of course. Three is probably the worst Monster Blood sequel. Uh, as of right now, I I was kind of bored with Monster Blood for breakfast. I didn't really finish the book that much. I only got like halfway in that book. I won't review it. I'll review all the Warland books at one. So yeah, that's my thoughts on Monster Book. Thanks for watching. See you next time. Oh, before I leave, I will review the Five Masks of Doctor Scream. Yeah, it's not as it's not as C R E A M. It's S C R E E M. Yeah, Scream. Thank you for watching this video. So long, guys. Stay cool.